Hello everyone. In this INR number 64, we are going to discuss about another important uh, tumor that is called as nasopharyngeal carcinoma. So what is nasopharyngeal carcinoma? It is commonly seen in the males. And remember, because they are commonly seen in males, we can correlate this thing to one special habit that these are associated with the smoking also. So most commonly in the males associated with the smoking and usually it will be fourth to fifth decade, you know, we, who will be affected. So what should be the most common presentation in this patient? So most common presentation in this patient will be upper neck swelling. Why, why there is the upper neck swelling? Why there is upper neck swelling? Why? Because of the cervical lymph node metastasis because from the nasopharynx tumor would have metastasized into the cervical lymph node. So that is why on clinical examination you will see cervical lymph node enlargement in the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. So upper neck swelling is because of metastasis into the cervical lymph node. So this is upper neck swelling is because of metastasis. Origin, what will be the origin of this tumor? So most commonly this tumor is arising from the fossa of Rosenmuller, which is a lateral wall of nasopharynx, which we can see here. Lateral wall of nasopharynx and tumor will be arising from here. So this is the lateral wall of nasopharynx and cancer is arising from this place. So that is the most common site for the origin of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. What will be the microscopy? When you will use diagnosis, microscopy will be you will take out the sample from here you will do the microscopy and microscopy most common type you will see the squamous cell carcinoma so as i say squamous cell carcinoma what we will find the squamous cell carcinoma you you can see uh, tumor cells are there along with keratin pulse so now you can see that i'm marking these are the keratin pulse so now you are you can see these are all the keratin pulse which we can observe here so just i'm marking one thing this is the keratin pearl which we are seeing in this squamous cell carcinoma right so these are the keratin pearls which we are seeing so uh, they have very uh, you know strong association with Epstein-Barr virus also so nasopharyngeal carcinoma they are most commonly associated with Epstein-Barr virus and remember if Epstein-Barr virus is associated so they will be associated with non-keratinizing and undifferentiated squamous cell cancer see this is keratinizing because keratin pearls are there remember this is well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma keratinizing type because they have keratin pearls so if they have keratin pearl it is keratinizing type so this is the most common type and most common type is having no association with Epstein-Barr virus right so you, that is what I wanted to say that Epstein-Barr virus is usually associated with non-keratinizing and undifferentiated type of squamous cell carcinoma right squamous cell uh, this uh, uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma is associated with trotter triad also so what is trotter triad there are three things we can remember by pct right so mnemonic is pct what is p palatal paralysis because of the cranial nerve 10th paralysis soft palate will be having immobility so you can see this is the palatal paralysis now this is the immobility of the soft palate uvula has been immobilized so uvula is deviated so this is the palatal paralysis second is conductive deafness why there is a conductive deafness and this will be remember this will be unilateral conductive deafness because of serous otitis media or glue ear so we are having thick fluid inside the middle ear so because of thick fluid inside the middle ear we call this as a glue ear right so glue ear because of thick fluid in this and this serous otitis media is the reason for conductive deafness right so this, this is a conductive deafness palatal paralysis palatal paralysis conductive deafness because of the thick fluid and third one is the trigeminal neuralgia so you can see trigeminal neuralgia because of the cranial nerve trigeminal nerve involvement will be there what should be the management in management investigation of choice will be mri so gadolinium enhanced mri is used for this and when you will see the nasopharyngeal carcinoma in the mri you will see soft tissue mass is present so now you can see that from from fossa of rosenmuller soft tissue mass is expanding and they are going into the nasopharynx and uh, they are going into the uh, oropharynx and as they are as well as they are going into paravertebral space so this is the mri which we are doing right so gadolinium enhanced mri is investigation of choice and what should be the treatment of choice treatment of choice will be radiotherapy and most commonly we will be using external beam radiotherapy so this is a very important topic for a neat pg and fmg exam so keep revising this topic 
and keep revising the topics from the INR, you are going to get many questions from here. My best wishes to all of you.